So in this video, I want to share with you my knowledge. So after the completion of this video, you would have clear understanding why we need DMA, how it works and how to use it. For that purpose, we're going to consider a simple example. Imagine that we want to record audio using the microphone. So the microphone is connected to the ADC. So in so we're going to sample audio data and store it on a memory space. To do this operation, we will write a code similar to this. So inside of for loop, we will sample data and store it on a buffer. And during the execution of this code, uh, we might ask the CPU to do other things, for example, switching on and off LEDs or doing some computations. And if we ask the CPU to do other things, CPU would claim, oh, are you kidding me? I'm doing this operation. If we lose one audio sample, there will be audio glitch, so everything is going to fail. And, and the CPU is right, because this is really important thing. And uh, during the execution of this code, we don't have much uh, computational time to do other things as well. Fortunately, nowadays we have DME that can transfer data from location A to B without any CPU integration. So we assign this work to DME and the CPU is free so we can use the CPU to, to, to do some computations or to transfer any other data. And let's get in detail. Uh, in general, we have three options, memory to peripheral. For example, we want to um, stream audio data to the speaker, so we might use memory to peripheral. Uh, second option is peripheral to memory, as we discussed. For example, when you sampling microphone data, we will use this option. And finally, we have memory to memory, when we want to transfer um, data from one place to another. And also when you have several DMAs, you have to set priorities. When using the DMA, we have to provide all the necessary parameters. For that purpose, we're gonna consider this pseudocode. So in our understanding, DMA can do this automatically. So when we ask the DMA to transfer data from one location to another, first it asks source and, dis and destination addresses. Then we have to provide the data size because it's quite logical. We might have 8-bit data, 16-bit, or 32-bit data. And also, instead of buffer, we might have just a one variable. So we need to specify whether we're going to increment or not after every iteration. Next step is to provide the total number of data to transfer. It's similar to the conditional statement of the for loop. Also, DMA can do this uh, transfer endlessly. Analogy would be uh, endless while loop. So basically we have two options, either circular or non-circular mode. So we need to specify it. So after providing all this information, the may can transfer data automatically without the CPU intervention. It is also worth being familiar with the block diagram from the reference manual. As you see, the may controllers can access to the memory and the peripherals through the common bus matrix. So it can work independently from the CPU when it comes to transferring data between the memory and the peripherals. I also found these tables quite useful because they show exactly in which peripherals we can use the DMA. Also, as you see, every channel can access to specific peripherals for example, if we decide to stream data using SPA1, we need to work with this channel 4 of DMA2. But in this case, we won't be able to use other peripherals on, on this channel. However, if you're using the Cubemix software to program the microcontroller, using the DMA is quite straightforward. For example, I'm using SPA1, I open DMA settings, and here I need to enable um, the channel by pressing this add button. Then we have some parameters, uh, circular or non-circular mode, whether to increment the address or not, data size. After configuring all these parameters, we can save the file so the Cubimix software will generate all the necessary code to configure the DMA. 
Then we can open the header file of the corresponding peripheral. In my case, I have SPI, so I will open this header file. And if you scroll down, you will find um, all the necessary functions to work with the DMA. For example, I can use this function to transmit data through SPI protocol using DMA. So we initiate transmission of the data using this function, then DMA will work automatically to transfer data. If you need even more detailed information, you can refer to my STM32 programming course. Here I will show how to use the DMA with I2C, SPI, and UART communication protocols. You will get practical knowledge how to stream and receive data when working with sensors.